So over the last few days, I have been interviewing people about the Vic Mignogna situation and trying to figure out how much of what we have been hearing was true and how much was false. Unfortunately, in the process, I ended up finding out that some people I know in real life and have known for quite some time, and I have no reason to believe they would lie to me, uh, are wrapped up in that situation. So I think that it would be a little unethical for me to be making videos on that subject, especially given how hard I have criticized uh, people in the past, like with the Zoe Quinn situation, where they uh, writing articles and reviews for a friend or someone that they know. So unfortunately, all of that work is going straight down the drain. So instead, I want to go ahead and promote a new channel that just popped up, ran by Mad Mike. He was one of the guys who stood in for me uh, while I had lost my voice and covered the Ghostbusters 3 situation and the Chris Pratt, oh my God, he's a homophobe uh, situation. Uh, as I said, he just started up a channel and something I like to do for small channels is take one of their videos and upload it here so that uh, if you like what you see, you can head over there and subscribe. Subscribe. There will be a link in the description and in the pinned comment uh, with a link to his channel where you can go over there and subscribe and check out some of the other videos that he has done. Uh, Mike knows a fuck ton about movies and the industry and how to actually make movies. Uh, I really respect his uh, knowledge on the matter and the guy is wickedly fucking entertaining. Uh, so if you like, again, if you like what you see here, head over to his channel, check out a couple of videos, like, share, subscribe, do all that good jazz. I want to go ahead and do this for the other guy who stood in for me, uh, Vash the Ashtray, uh, to help get these new channels some exposure. So uh, without any further ado, here is Mike talking about whether or not he thinks the Shazam movie will be a success or an absolute flop. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Mad Mike here, and today we will be discussing uh, what I believe will be the continuing uh, video series, since I've technically had two in this category already, of the Will It Fail series. Um, and I've compiled a playlist which will be available on the channel, uh, which, can which after the completion of this video will include three videos, uh, Captain Marvel, Alita Battle Angel, and now we will do Shazam. And uh, this is going to be just basically a series deconstructing a film that we're not 100% sure if it's going to make a profit or if it's going to be successful for the studio. And it's just going to see what we got to work with, what to expect, and whether or not uh, we can expect this movie to make enough of a profit to either warrant a sequel or just to uh, you know, make back its money and the studio will be uh, happy with it. So, like I said, we're going to be looking at Shazam today. Uh, so the character of Shazam uh, was originally known as Captain Marvel, uh, published by Fawcett Comics until they were bought up by DC and the character was lumped into the DC universe. And ironically, he's actually basically a Superman ripoff in a lot of ways, uh, except that you know now he's been folded into the DC universe, so you have Superman ripoff and Superman in the same universe. Um, but let's just go into the uh, the basics on the character. So Shazam is a character. Uh, he basically in his normal form he is Billy Batson, who is a young boy um, who was given powers by a wizard, also named Shazam, uh, to turn into the superhero uh, known as Shazam, who has a bunch of powers uh, derived from Greek gods. And they might try to lump this in with Wonder Woman a little bit because I know that some of his powers, like his lightning bolt, comes from Zeus and uh, it's based heavily on Greek mythology uh, in terms of some of it. So we'll see if maybe they'll try to lump that in uh, with the Wonder Woman mythos. But uh, overall, the character is fairly entertaining uh, from the trailers that we've seen. It looks like his powers are fairly well done in the film from a CGI standpoint and from both a, and a practical effects standpoint as well. So we're going to go into first, let's just go into the people that are going to be in the film. So are the person who's going to be behind the camera in this case of uh, David Sandberg. Now David Sandberg, uh, who is the director, he hasn't really done a lot of noteworthy things. He's done, um, he did an Annabelle sequel uh, recently and he's done mostly horror related stuff uh, before this film. But you know, I, it's one of those things, the producer has worked with him before uh, and I think that was probably why he was hired onto this project. And from the trailer, even though they're looking for, even though he's a horror guy generally, he's directed horror before this film, 
he seems to do a good job with uh, the humor. Uh, it, at least it, it seems amusing from the trailers. You know, trailers can be deceiving, but at the same time, it, it seems like the humor uh, hits pretty good, or it hits on the right notes. So, I'm, I'm not really that concerned with Sandberg, and I've said it before uh, that you know, directors, when they go from very low budget to very high budget, there are a lot of issues. I've said that about Ryan Johnson. I've said that about other small-time directors that have done similar things. Uh, but the thing is, this is not as bloated of a budget as, uh, you know, some of the films that we've looked at, and I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but moving on from Sandberg, uh, you have the major actors in the film, which uh, Zachary Levi is the front and center. He is the superhero version of Shazam. Um and he is mostly known for a show, I don't know if uh, some people might remember it, uh, from back in the day, I think it was on for three or four seasons, was Chuck, which was a, a comedy show. So again, his acting style fits well into that. I like him as the Shazam character from a goofy point of view. He has that idea of you know playing a big kid, essentially, uh, which is basically what he's supposed to be, because Billy Batson, even though he's this titular f- figure in Shazam, he is uh, still you know a 10-year-old boy. Uh, so he does a very good job of basically playing a man-child. Um, and then based on the trailer, again, we have Asher Angel, who plays uh, Billy Batson, the the child version. And uh, he seems to do a very good job in general uh, when they show him. He seems to be, you know, your typical modern-day kid, a little bit of a, little bit of a smart mouth, but nothing uh, to the point where I, I would say that he's bratty, uh, at least not from the trailer. Uh, so I think he's been doing a good job, at least from what I've seen. Uh, Jack Dylan Grazer, who plays his best friend, who's Freddie Freeman, who kind of introduces him to the superhero stuff, because Billy Batson in the film uh, appears to not really be uh, in tune with the, the superhero, uh, the culture, or you know any of the things around them. Like He's aware of them, but he's not really into that thing. And uh, Freddie Freeman is the character who is and kind of explains how some of this stuff works. And they, they show them going down the list of like testing out his superpowers and stuff like that, which is pretty interesting. Um, so he's going to be kind of like our superhero encyclopedia for, for the film, which will be uh, which will be interesting. And they do show a few little snippets to link it into the DCEU. They show a batarang from uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. They show, I believe it's a newspaper clipping from the, the when Superman dies uh, and Batman v Superman. And, and uh, so it should be interesting. Uh, and then Mark Strong, who rounds out the cast, is going to be the main villain, Thaddeus Savannah, and he is uh, basically he's kind of like a holdover villain because obviously The Rock has been signed on to play Black Adam who assuming this movie does well he will show up in the sequel uh, so Mark Strong is pretty much a placeholder and basically his character of uh, Thaddeus Savannah is uh, he gets exposed to the Shazam lightning powers and gains a little bit of it and so he gets to go head to head with Shazam um, so the actors uh, look good. The director, even though it is kind of shaky, I don't really have too much of a problem with it uh, because of the budgetary issues. And, uh, you know, from from the trailer, the acting looks fairly good. I haven't seen a lot of Mark Strong, which, you know, he could be one of those comical, over-the-top, uh, you know, villains that doesn't re- you're not really relatable. It could be, you know, one of those performances where he's chewing scenery. Uh, I don't know yet because, we, again, we haven't really seen a whole a lot of him. We probably won't until the movie comes out and I believe, April. Um, is when the release date for this film is. So now we're gonna shoot on down to the budget, and I, I got a little grief in uh, one of my uh, in the Alita video uh, for the way I did financials, and I've I've since looked that back up, and I've uh, I've retuned my math, so to speak. So it's a bit different this time around. So uh, people did this. A few commenters did mention that I uh, I put in the advertising budget. And it, it, supposedly the advertising budget is included in the total budget and yada, yada, yada. This is a production budget. A production budget does not include advertising. And I was wrong to include advertising in general because the advertising does not come out of the total film's budget. It comes out of the studio's budget. So they're going to spend that money no matter what. And whether they spend it on this movie or another movie, they're going to spend it no matter what. So that really shouldn't be counted against the film because it's actually coming from an external source. It's coming from the studio's marketing department. So I'm just going to really just compare this movie's production budget uh, with the high end of what the Aquaman budget looked like. So the budget for this film is uh, slated at around 90 to $100 million, which is really low for a modern super, uh, superhero movie. 
Uh, but you can also see that from the trailer, the movie is not as special effects heavy as some other ones. Uh, so you look at Aquaman, and Aquaman had uh, 160 to 200 million for the estimated production budget. And that movie obviously made a ton of profit because it made over a billion dollars. Um, but if you look back at Shazam, Shazam does not need to make a lot of money um, in order to actually uh, come out on top and make a profit. It really only needs to make between 250 and 300 million dollars to break even, which I think it can very easily make. Um, and I think they've been doing a, a great job in terms of advertising this film. They're trying to go with the lighter tone with the DCEU. Again, that worked with Aquaman. You're going to see it even more so with this because it's far more comedic, at least according to the trailers. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of different stuff going on there uh, to try and attract people. They're also, uh, the director has been going head-to-head -head with the uh, creators of the Captain Marvel movie, uh, saying that would they have the real Captain Marvel, quote-unquote, um, or the original Captain Marvel, which... Uh, the Captain Marvel that it was the Shazam character did cut what did exist before I believe the Captain Marvel from uh, Marvel Comics. Uh, so again, very interesting. Uh, but the budget is really what I think is going to wind up making this movie a success uh, because it is it is low and it doesn't need to make a whole lot to break even. It needs and it doesn't need Aquaman numbers. I think if you make you know six to seven hundred million on this movie, I think you could consider it a very very big success. Um, financially. So uh, for the closing statement, I think this movie is going to do well. I think it knows what its audience is. I think it's uh, riding on the coattails of Aquaman, which was a huge success, and it's not coming out that far after it. And I think that the advertising for the movie has been very good for the most part. Uh, so again, uh, that's just my opinion, but uh, leave in the comments what you think. Um, and remember to hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications. And thank you again for listening in. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?